yeah, it comes with a mixing tray, so maybe I won't even need this these cups. Look, built right into the to the case right here. This blister pack case. Let's open this up. JB Well, famous. Famous supplier for all the major manufacturers. You ever wonder how Paulson got started? Oh, it comes with a stir stick too. Look at these JB Weld. Look at this, a stir stick. Compared to my little worthless stick here. So we have a stir stick, we have a mixing tray. Let's use the JB Weld stuff. Why would I, why would I not do that? All right, now, again, this is just a test. Normally you would have your inlay all squared away to set in here, but this is kind of a materials test to see if it would make a good... Every time I put these on, I feel like those doctors that inspect your body, they're like, bend over. Every time I hear that sound, that's what I think of. All right, my goggles are already fogging up. And they call these safety goggles. I don't get it. I never understood that, even when I was in college. All right, read the instructions. Safety directions. Avoid contact with skin. Wear protective gloves. All right, yes, but where's the instructions here? Mix. Mix well, five minutes, all right. Prepare, clean repair area. There is no repair area. Um, apply with appropriate tool, even coat. Weld, bead, or extrude shape is needed. Dry sets in five minutes, cures in one hour. Temperature is below 40 degrees, set timer is longer. All right, so it looks like we're okay. Now, what color do we want? Uh, do we want to do a blue or an orange? Let's do a bright, happy, warm color like this orange right here. Is that an orangish red? Here we go. Orangish red. This is the color we're going to use. Very sophisticated. I'm sure Paulson did this when they were making their first poker chips. Um, go. You always want that chalky texture to your poker chips. Now. How does this work? Does this just come on the screen? Does you have to break something? Do you have to... See, they make these child-proof cases and it's like, do not stare directly into the nozzle. Got it, safety warning. All right, so does this stuff just like come out? Oh man, that's, that's beautiful. Does that look like enough? Volume-wise? Lovely, put the cap back on here. Uh, let's see. How does the cap go? This? Nope, the other way. I totally just mixed the... You see what I did? I totally just mixed the heart. This is a one-time use thing. All right, well, now we're going to use the professional stir stick. And we have five minutes. Chalk and epoxy. I'm such a genius. How come we didn't think of this before? This is gonna answer everybody's home making, homemade poker chips problems that they've been having for the last like 150 years and now right here today on YouTube, problem solve. Sure, we've had a few failures and some pretty big successes. I mean, I can't think of a better, I mean, that's just such a lovely professional looking poker chip right there. All right, that looks good. Now, let's pour this in. Uh-oh, some chalk fell. Oh no, some chalk dust is coming. Oh dear. Uh-oh. Stay in the mold. Very scientific here. We got the weights and the volume just perfect. Oh, look at this coming together right here. How's this? How about that? Can you see this? This looks amazing. We're just gonna let this set. I'm gonna turn on the fan and uh, air this place out and make sure that everything is safe and we're rocking. I'm super excited. So we'll be back in about an hour and see how this looks. All right, so it seems like my professional release agent I used, <laughs> poker chip release agent, didn't really work too well. So I basically used an X-Acto knife and basically cut this out of the mold. I broke the edge off. And then I cut, so it was a one-time use thing, all right? So same problem I had with my last experiment with the 39 case. I need to get a bit, butter would have worked better. Um, now, if you're thinking this looks super amazing and you totally want some of these because of the professional looks, I just want to demonstrate something real quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, 
I would be concerned about my mixture of hardener and epoxy, but it was in a plunger. I don't know. Maybe it needs another like 24 hours to cure or something. It's been two days and this did harden up. So this is a harder plastic now. I started sanding it. I was going to buff it up. Um, some things obviously to note, air bubbles. That's not a problem. I mean, you can put this in, I can get this in a vacuum chamber and suck those bubbles out when it's drying or curing and they wouldn't be a problem. So I'm not terribly concerned about that. There is no chalky feel. It feels of plastic. <laughs> it just feels like epoxy, right? Um, and finally, the cost. This is the most affordable homemade chip on the planet. I'm being sarcastic. $5.25 is my running cost for this, not including labor. Well, what's my time worth? Oh, that's a good question. $5. Okay, so all of a sudden the $1 chips don't seem too bad. $5 for this lovely, exquisite poker chip with a, even a denomination inlaid in here. Well, how much are these? It doesn't matter if they sell these for $2. It's still a better deal than this. 79 cents for a hard plastic chip. Are you kidding me? That sounds like the steal of the century. So looking at this, the f one reason why I stopped sanding and buffing is because as I was applying pressure to it, I noticed that this thing was warping. So it did harden up, but as I apply pressure here, um, it obviously is warping. And this has two this this has two effects. Number one, it makes me hungry because I want some of that like peel and eat fruit. You know what I mean? Like those fruit roll-ups, whatever they're called. Oh my gosh, so delicious. I want to go buy some right now, making me hungry. Anyway, so the other effect is it's just not flat, okay? It's the Tiki King. No, it's the <laughs> it's the uh, fruit roll-up chip here. I might as well have used raspberries, raspberries, instead of this uh, sidewalk chalk. Next time I need to use something that hardens and stiffens and strengthens the epoxy. That's why they have fiberglass, by the way, instead or like carbon fiber, instead of something that like softens it. Chalk. Who puts chalk? It didn't even add any texture. Gosh. Either way. Sometimes you have these ideas and they're just, it turns out, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not a genius. Hey, maybe I'm not a genius. Should we weigh them? Just for kicks and giggles, why not? Get my money's worth $5 for that silly chip. All right, so you remember our last attempt? Super exquisite. 8.7 grams. And then we're moving on to our Tiki King chip, 9.4, 8 8.6, 8.2. What do you think this is going to weigh? Ding, ding, ding. You're correct. 5.6 grams. Oh, dear. So here's the, oh, here's the H39 case that I used. What's left of it anyway. Maybe this would make a better, maybe this would make a better poker chip. Be cheaper. Ah, I need to glue a few of those together. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a good Thanksgiving. This has just been, it's always fun. You always get these ideas like, hey, I bet you if I mix in some chalk with it, that would make a wonderful, I need either a lot more chalk and I need something to stiffen it. I need just a different recipe. So we'll see what we can do in the future. Let me know any of your ideas. Thank you so much for watching. Visit PokerChipForum.com. They're our sponsor. I also have an Amazon shop. You can find that in the links in the description below. And I look forward to reading all of your comments. Please subscribe. My name is John Hobby. Thank you so much for watching.